this is an important note that this isn't necessarily something that's that's weird. Dogs naturally guard stuff, and so do we. I kind of let my wife eat off my plate, you know. But if a stranger walks by and takes food off my plate, I'm well. I might raise my voice. We don't like it, right? Dogs don't like it either. We have this idea that dogs should just accept people messing with their stuff, and we just got done talking about how food's the number one resource for them. So isn't it reasonable that they would want to hang on to it? I think that it is, and we're going to talk more about that, but the first thing we have to say is it, it is not reasonable to say that dogs should just let anybody walking by mess with their food, and if they don't, they're difficult or vicious or anything like that. Uh, the next is, is it's important to note that actual problematic resource guarding not the normal natural kind, but the problem that is aberrant behavior is not related to the quantity of resources. So there might be a hundred, hundred balls in the room, but the dog doesn't want you to take their ball or take the ball over there. And when we see dogs drop one thing and run over and get mad about this thing, that's when we know that we have an issue we want to address. Does that make sense? The difference is an important distinction. If there's one ball and I walk up and I try to take it from a dog I don't know, I expect that they'll get mad. If there's 100 balls and they don't want me to have this one over here, well, that's an issue we have to address. And one of the most common myths, and it's important to note, resource guarding is not the result of a spoiled dog. In fact, some of the things that some people call spoiling dogs is part of the solution. Spoiling a dog is never a good idea. What that means, we can argue all day. But it, it's not related to anything that about giving them too many things or something like so more about resource guarding, and this is true for all kinds of reactivity, we want to work below our dog's threshold. What that means is, is that we want the dog to be aware that we're coming toward them and their stuff, but we don't want to get so close that they're barking and lashing out. So sleepy head over here, you know, if it was him, maybe I would walk to here and he'd have his bone and I would toss him a treat back up. Maybe we do that for a couple days. Because if I get to hear he growls, then this isn't where I want to be. Because this is past his threshold and I want to be below it. That's really important because once I get close enough to set him off, it's too late now. I've already, I've already proven to him that I am something to worry about. This is really important. Dogs and people both, we don't learn well after we're already past the point of no return. We want to play games by teaching our dog to give items back and forth. This is a common misunderstanding I hear about all the time that we're going to reward bad behavior. What we want to be doing is creating good behavior. Don't worry so much about reinforcing bad behavior. We want to create the behavior that we want. So an example of this might be that I might have two balls and I would give him the less valuable ball and then ask him to trade, give him the more valuable ball. Then I might take the less valuable ball and some bacon and say, you want to trade your ball for this ball and the bacon? Yes, great. Then I might give him both balls and the bacon and just walk away. So every interaction that we have about items becomes something that's really 